Hey, you cool cats and kittens. It's Miss Yabbit here, and happy Friday. Well, you all did such a great job reading chapters four and five yesterday and answering our questions. And I am so excited to get to read, drum roll please, two really cool texts with you today. One nonfiction article and, of course, chapter six of our historical fiction text. But first, some announcements. Friends, if you haven't already, make sure that you log on to Lexia and have at least 150 minutes. You need to make sure that you have at least 150 minutes so that you can get full points on your Lexia assignment. You don't need to do much on that assignment when you get that grade on Monday, except click mark as done. Remember, your teachers are looking to give you Vista virtual points. Scholars, we also still have office hours from 2.45 to 4 o'clock, and we want to make sure that we earn the very last Vista Virtual Prizes. ELA Masters, I can't wait to get to read more of Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. Today, we are reading Chapter 6. As a reminder, good readers always ask ourselves, while we're reading any historical fiction text, how is the setting important to the plot of the story? What can stories teach readers about the past? And how do good readers distinguish fact from fiction while reading historical fiction? Elay Masters, can you remind me what is the setting of our story, Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes? Yes, this text takes place in Hiroshima, Japan in 1954, nine years after the atomic bombs were dropped after World War II. It's very important that we're thinking about how our character perceives what is happening in the story. Let's review what historical fiction is, friends. Remember that you can go into Classwork to find your resource. Historical fiction. My turn. Historical fiction is an imaginative story that takes place in the historical past and may have some real events or people. Your turn. Historical fiction is an Great job, friends. Like I said, the setting is very important. By now, we know from our last couple informational text articles that the cancer leukemia has resulted from radiation from the atomic bomb that was dropped in Hiroshima, even nine years later in our setting. And our main character, Sadako Sasaki, has a new problem that we found out about that she's battling this disease at only 11 years old. Our second characteristic of historical fiction is that it is often focused on real issues of the time and characters' perspective of them. You told me all about how Sadako was feeling when she realized that she was diagnosed with leukemia, and that is important to the plot of the story. Again, some values, perspectives, and living conditions are different from today. ELA Masters, we also know that as good readers, we often read a nonfiction text before we read a fiction text because it builds our... Yes, our schema about the setting and important people and events of the time. This helps us better understand the setting and characters in the fiction text. Scholars, do you remember from our past chapters, how is Sadako going to try and solve her problem? Tell me, I'll give you a hint, it's in the title. Yes, friends. Sadako, thanks to her best friend Jizuko, has decided that she's going to try and fold 1,000 paper cranes. Can you say, whoa? Good. I had so much fun thinking about in my historical fiction journal if Sadako will be able to achieve this amazing goal. 
Scholars, today, before we read chapter six, we are going to learn more about how sadako is going to fold those paper cranes. It is actually a very special technique in Japan called origami. Reading this text will help us find real facts. It will help us find good real facts that will help us understand and build our schema what is happening in our historical fiction text. Again, friends, we are going to be reading this nonfiction article called Origami. We are going to be reading what genre of text? Tell me. Yes, ELA masters do not get tricked. Origami is a nonfiction text. That is the genre. Remember that genre means a type of book. Genre means a? Yes. So real facts is not a genre. Make sure you remember this because you might be asked this on your exit ticket again today. The genre of text of origami is what? Tell me. Nonfiction. Very good. ELA Masters. As good readers, I know that I always skim the text first to find the main topic. Then I'll be highlighting the topic sentences as I read. After, I'll put them all together to form one main idea. Let's read. Origami. Hmm. As I'm skimming these headings, I notice that the word origami keeps being repeated over and over and over. And I also notice in this photograph that this seems to be a picture of paper folded into different shapes. Ooh, I can see a frog. <gasps> this looks like an elephant. So cool. I think from my schema that the main topic in one to three words is origami paper folding. Let's read to see what this is about. Origami. What is origami? Origami is the Japanese word for paper folding. Ori means to fold and kami means paper. Together, they form the word origami. Wow, pretty cool. ELA Masters, what does the word origami mean? Tell me. Yes, it is the Japanese word for paper folding. Let's go ahead and add that to our Google form. Origami means paper folding. If you need to, pause your video to type that in now. Good. Let's keep reading. Together, they form the word origami. It is an art form that has been handed down from parent to child through many generations. Origami involves the creation of paper forms, usually entirely by folding. Wow. Animals, birds, fish, geometric shapes, puppets, toys, and masks are among the models that even very young children can learn to make in just one sitting. Whoa, this sounds so cool. Scholars, I think this sentence here describes to me what origami actually is. Origami involves the creation of paper forms entirely by folding. That means no glue, no scissors, and no cutting. These shapes are all formed by folding paper. Have you ever tried origami at home before? Tell me. Really cool, scholars. What are some things or some forms that you can make by folding paper, by making origami? Tell me. Yes, if you said animals, birds, fish, geometric shapes, and puppets, give me a high five. 
This seems like a pretty cool skill. Remember that we're reading this text to build our schema about Sadako and the thousand paper cranes. So think to yourself, what details of this text might be important so far? History. In Japan, at one time, origami was taught in schools, but today, children are generally taught origami at home. Holidays are celebrated with colorful origami decorations made by the family. Hmm. It seems like origami sounds like it's very important to Japanese traditions or things that are passed down in the families that we do every year. Hmm, that makes sense that when Chizuko brought the paper crane to Sadako, it seemed like it was very meaningful. I think that this first sentence describes to me the history between then and now of what origami is and how it's taught. In the past, it was taught in schools, but today they are taught it at home. And that gives me more information about how origami is important to family. And based on what we read yesterday, to Sadako and her best friend, Jizuko. Let's keep reading. The crane. Hmm. Perhaps the most well-known origami model is the crane. It has become the international symbol of peace. In Japan, every child eventually learns to make the crane. The crane is associated with health. Hmm, interesting. So friends, in Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, why is it of all these animals and shapes that Jizuko could have made for Sadako, she chose to make a crane? Why do you think that is? Tell me. Right. I see here that it says that the crane has become the international symbol of peace and with health. We know that Chizuko, or not Chizuko, silly Miss Ya, but that Sadako is very sick. She might have leukemia. And Chizuko probably knew that the crane, which is associated with health, might bring her that extra good luck. What does the crane stand for in Japan? Tell me. Right, it is a symbol for peace and health. Let's add that to our form. The crane is associated with peace and health. If you need to, pause your video to type that in now. Good, let's keep reading. Before I move on, I think that this first sentence is the topic sentence because the rest of the sentences give me extra details about how the most well-known origami model is the crane, this folded bird. Let's keep reading. Origami folds. Paper folders like to share their models with people from all over the world. To help us do this, folding symbols were developed. These will help you learn origami. Ooh, pretty cool. So this looks like the valley fold, which, silly Miss Yaw, but usually when we make our planners, I call this a hamburger fold. The mountain fold. So it looks like this, like a mountain. Fold and unfold. Wow. ELA Masters, I think that this first sentence describes to me what this photograph or this diagram is showing me. That it's showing me how people make origami. And the first sentence says, paper folders like to share their models with people from all over the world. Again, this is a diagram. This is a... Good. 
I don't know about you scholars, but I thought this was really cool. I might spend some time looking up some YouTube videos on how to make origami. How about you? Now, I'm going to put together all of my topic sentences into one main idea. When I read these first couple sentences, I noticed that a repeating idea was that origami, which is the art of paper folding, is a Japanese family tradition. I saw multiple details about how it's passed down from parents to children and how children learn it at home. Again, a tradition is something that you do that is passed down through generations and you typically do at home. My second repeated topic sentence is that origami comes in many shapes, the most well known being the crane. This is significant because well, Sadako is folding how many paper cranes, friends? Yes, 1,000 paper cranes. I now know and have added to my schema that the crane is associated with health. And Sadako needs all the good luck from these health cranes that she needs in order to get better from leukemia. When I put these together, my main idea is that Origami is the Japanese family tradition, an art of folding paper into many different forms, such as cranes. Ely Masters, when you are done double checking your answers, go ahead and click next to continue.